I would just like to... Uh, seems to be a ring about that, is that right? like to uh, acknowledge my source material, the KJV version, and various and sundry Ellen White books. And I'll endeavour to stay true to those as I speak to you this morning. Our Lord in heaven, I just pray uh, again that as a result of our study this morning that you will lead us to understand more clearly the great gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. The word betrayal, the word betrayal, according to the dictionary, to give away to the enemy loyalty or secrets, to be unfaithful to, to deny, to disown, to refuse to acknowledge, to declare something that was not true. Judas was the only disciple who invited himself to be a disciple. All the others had been invited by, by Jesus or other disciples. Judas came to him full of his own self, uh, uh, self-importance and he har harboured a, uh, har a spirit of selfishness. He did have, however, some good points. He was a leader of men. He was liked and he was accepted by the other uh, disciples <clears throat> and uh, it was only until only when he went to the feast at Simon's house that he really began to publicly show that the spirit that he had in him when he complained at the cost of the sacrifice that Mary had made. <clears throat> he thought that it might have been best used to give to the poor. What he was saying to himself is that I will be able to take my share out of that and put it into my own pocket. He was even given powers to heal the sick and to cast out devils when they went on their missionary journey. At one time Jesus sermonised in the temple about his blood being drunk and about his body being eaten. And a lot of people left Jesus at that time because this was a little that message was a little untasteful to them. It affected Judas also. He did not really want to be with Jesus if he was going to preach this doctrine. That happened about a year before the crucifixion. It offended Judas to think of that possibility. The real character of Judas was hidden from the disciples, mostly. Jesus knew his real character and he was to be his traitor. It wasn't until the upper room experience that Jesus began to identify Judas as the betrayer. Judas uh, took up the position on the left-hand side of Jesus and he was the first one to have his feet washed. And this offended him to see Jesus washing his feet because he thought Jesus was going to be the new king of Israel, the saviour from the oppressive Romans. And he was going to be his second in command. The Holy Spirit worked upon Judas at that moment, however, and he did have a feeling that maybe... He got it wrong. But this feeling didn't last long. Judas was an unfaithful disciple and he was possessed by a devil. Especially, and that devil forced him to leave the upper room after Jesus had identified him. Jesus said to him, go and do what you have to do. And the other disciples didn't have a clue what they were talking about. Judas knew, however, and he went out and spoke with the priests for the second time to betray Jesus and to be paid his 30 pieces of silver. His betrayal was going to be an identification. I don't know why Jesus had to be identified because everybody knew him, the high priests knew him. The priests in the temple knew him, the rabbis knew him, the lawyers knew him. They had jousted words with him on many occasions. They knew who Jesus was. 
that Judas was going to formally betray him. A few hours later, um, Judas came leading a mob to the Garden of Gethsemane, the experience there that Jesus went through had just finished. There was the high priest, there were rabbis, there were lawyers, there were soldiers from the temple, and there was a rabble of odd supporters that they'd picked up on the way who were coming out, as it were, to take a thief. When the light, when the angel who was helping Jesus in the garden stood before the people, of course, they all fell down. This also tempted Jesus to think, tempted Judas to think that Jesus was going to use his supernatural powers to destroy all those who were against him. And so he was encouraged in what he was going to do because surely Jesus would look after himself and he would protect himself. He wanted Christ to be king. He wanted him to overthrow the Romans and he wanted to be his second in command. At the time of the feeding of the 5,000, you remember that the people wanted to make him king. Guess who began that feeling? It was Judas. He even convinced the rest of the disciples that they had better crown Jesus as king there on the side of the mountain before those people. Jesus soon put a stop to that. And when Judas came to Jesus and kissed him, Jesus said, Betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? During the trial, Judas became very perplexed and he began to wonder whether in fact Jesus was going to protect himself. He could hear the false accusations. He could hear the, um, uh, the rabble. And he began to wonder and he began to doubt as to whether Jesus was going to look after himself. Surely he will use his godly power to save himself, to defend himself and establish himself as king of the Jews. Judas began to realise that he'd made a fatal mistake. He hurled the money at the feet of the, whole, of the high priest. The high priest jeered and rejected him. <clears throat> that's over to you. That's your business. We have Jesus. That's your business. Judas then prostrated himself at the feet of Jesus, asking for forgiveness. And Jesus whispered to him the voice of love, for this cause came I into the world. Judas was then completely compelled by his demon to rush out from that hall and he rushed out to a tree and with a convenient bit of rope he hanged himself. After he was dead, the rope broke, the tree broke, something broke. He ended up in a horrible heap on the ground and he was being eaten by the dogs. And I can think of somebody else in the Bible who was eaten by the dogs. And this would have been the ultimate degradation for the Hebrew people to be eaten by a dog. Judas refused to accept Jesus as his saviour. He was too greedy and selfish to look at the life of Jesus in any other way and his relation to him was one in which he would gain. Peter, on the other hand, denial to disown, to refuse to acknowledge, to declare something to be not true. Peter was the first convert. He was the first convert of Andrew, his brother. Come and see, we have found the Messiah. Uh, Judas, uh, uh, Peter, was a fisherman. The Lord called him Petrus, a stone, or Cephas, a rock. He was intelligent. He was a born leader. He was articulate. He was strong. He was impetuous. He became the official spokesman for the disciples. He was respected and esteemed by the disciples and considered to be their leader. He was one of Jesus' closest disciples with James and John. They were on the Mount of Transfiguration. They were invited to be nearest to Jesus when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
And when Jesus began to wash his feet, he said, wash my hands, my head, wash my whole body. He still didn't know what it was all about. He was assured, but he was not very courageous. Jesus knew Peter's character better than Peter knew himself. Came the time when Peter even uh, stated publicly that he would die for Jesus. I am not going to deny you. Though all these others might deny you, I will die with you. Little did Peter know that before the cock crew twice, he would deny Jesus three times. He caused the most acute pain that Jesus received in this whole experience by denying him three times. But there was a face-to-face -face con... There was a face-to-face -face, uh, occasion when Jesus looked at Peter, when they both heard the cock crow that second time. And in Jesus' face, it was a, such a look of love, forgiveness and help. And in the understanding face of Jesus, Peter saw forgiveness. And he ran out of the hall as well. And I wonder whether Judas or Peter ran out quickest. But they both left Jesus. Jesus had been denied and left at the time of the garden. And it was Peter who convinced all the other disciples that they'd better run and protect themselves when Jesus was taken captive. John and Peter were the only two disciples that we know of who actually followed him to the judgment hall. John had been known already by the high priest and he was allowed in and he uh, took Peter with him but they didn't stand together. Peter went with the rabble, warmed himself by the fire. But when he ran out of that hall, he ran knowing not where. He didn't know where he was going. I can think of other people who wandered around roaming, waiting for Jesus to tell them where to go. Jesus led him to the Garden of Gethsemane and he found himself prostrate on the ground in the very place where Jesus had been just a few hours beforehand. And Peter at that time was humbled and he was converted and he accepted the love of Jesus. He was completely changed. He led the church. He acknowledged three times his love for Jesus, and he was told three times to feed the flock. He denied three times, and he had to witness for three times. And in doing that, the, the other disciples renewed their confidence in him as their leader. The first convert preached the first evangelistic sermon and he converted over 3,000 3, souls in that first effort. Many of the people who were converted on that day were those who jeered and mocked Jesus in the trial time. He accomplished much for the church. He was a leader. He was a fisher of men. He was an example of positive response to Jesus' love. All the disciples had been told that they would deny Jesus. But only Judas was told that he was going to betray him. And they did. And he did. Peter ran to conversion, Judas ran to suicide. And I ask again, who do you think ran the fastest? Thomas even refused to believe until he thrust his fingers and his fist into the wounds of Christ. I was advised that I had to talk about the gospel. The good news of the gospel 
Let's have a quick look at it. And it's so simple that even I can understand it. Jesus, the Son of God, came to this earth. He lived a sinless life. He was cruelly and wrongfully murdered. He died to save me from my sin. He offers me eternal life if I will but believe on him as my saviour. Let me say that just again. He died to save you from your sin. He offers you eternal life if you will but believe on him as your saviour. The gospel is as simple as that. How did Judas get it wrong? He did not accept Jesus as his saviour. He died a horrible death. Peter sinned every bit as bad as the sin of Judas. But he believed in Jesus as his saviour. He gained victory by accepting the forgiveness that Jesus freely offers. Now here's a difficult question for you. Have you ever denied Jesus? Have you ever betrayed Jesus? You may answer this in the affirmative. And I have to. Because I've been guilty of denial. But I believe that God has forgiven my sins of denial. And I attest and witness today of my unconditional love for Jesus and my acceptance of his forgiveness as my saviour. Do you? Him 206. Shall I behold him far beyond the starry sky? Face to face in all his glory, I shall see him by and by. Only faintly now I see.
I shall see him by and by. Face to face, oh blissful moment. Face to face to see and know. Face to face with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who loves me so. Face to face shall I behold him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all his glory, I shall see. Lord God in heaven, help us all to be Peters today. Help us to see the face of Jesus. Help us to see his truth, his power, his mightiness, the fact that he's our saviour. May we accept him as such. Forgive us of our sins and the times that we might have denied you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.